Oh, what a horrible night to have the munchies, you think to yourself, as you stroll down the lamplit sidewalk, heading back to your apartment from your friend Craig's house. While Craig is a good hang when you need to get your fix of video games and anime, neither of you are master chefs. The fuel of the afternoon snacks you devoured several hours ago have long since faded, leaving only emptiness and hunger. You wish that you had ordered a double cheese pepperoni pizza when you had the chance. But what could even be open at this time of night? And what could satisfy your very specific cravings? You decide to take a shortcut through the local woods, since you know the path so well. Then, you see it. A neon open sign is perched on the window of Papa John's Pizzeria, which itself sits impossibly within the branches of an enormous beech tree. Your desire for pizza has been answered by the universe, and you feel like you are on top of the world. The promised land is right there before you. But of course, your mind was already in a state of bliss before you encountered this strange, arboreal location for a chain restaurant. You see, when you were at Craig's house, the two of you participated in an exchange of dank recreational herbalism. You did some indoor baking. You had a green day. Like the great poet and musician Bob Dylan saying, Everybody must get stoned! And right now, as you gaze up at a Papa John's pizzeria, you feel just like everyone. You make sure that sweet Za awaits you if you are able to climb the tree trunk into the branches. You grab hold of the bark and move in, up to the door and the one exposed window. With thoughts of pepperoni and artichoke toppings dancing in your mind, you enter Papa John's. The interior is dank and musty, but to your surprise, the restaurant seemed just like any ordinary Papa John's location. It was brightly lit and inviting. And the menu seemed to have all the classics that you, an avid Papa John's customer, were accustomed to. You approached the counter to place your pizza order, delighted that things were going so smoothly. Uh, excuse me? You say, feeling a bit like baked bread. Can I have two large, uh, medium pizzas? There is a scrambling of footsteps from the back of the kitchen as an employee emerges to greet you. A red blur crosses your vision as you see the iconic Papa John's uniform and the unusual green entity wearing it. This humanoid creature stands almost a meter tall and has lime green skin. You were immediately reminded of the goblins you encountered in one of Craig's RPG games. In your current Empire state of mind, you weren't about to question why an infamous fantasy monster was manning the register. You were way too hungry for that. Fortunately, it seemed like the creature understood. Two large medium pizzas coming right up, the gainful goblin employee noted. That'll be $20.99. Despite the bizarre setup, it seemed like your dollar was still good in Papa John's pizza tree. You fish around in your wallet for the correct sum, watching as the goblin barks orders to its fellow employees, another goblin who was gathering ingredients for the pizza. These ingredients were very much not what you expected. As if practicing some obscure form of woodland alchemy, the goblin chef lays out a bark pizza crust, spreads some pine sap over its surface, and then places some unknown substances in lieu of toppings. You aren't sure how to describe the substance, but the goblin poured it onto the pizza from what looked like a potion bottle. It was definitely some Keebler Elves tech for sure. You're only able to get a brief glimpse of it before the ultra-vegetarian pizza is taken out of sight, and your eyes shift down to the disgruntled face of the goblin employee. He taps the register impatiently, as you realize you'd been zoning out instead of handing over your cash. You fork over $21 and receive a penny back as change. It's a regular penny with good old Honest Abe on it and everything. You're almost expecting some kind of bizarre goblin currency. So this was neat, but then again, a penny on its own is hardly worth much. You decide to deposit the copper token into the take a penny, leave a penny dish on the counter. Then you stumble over to one of the wooden tables and take your seat and wait for your food. At this point, you're pretty zooted, so this whole thing is feeling a lot more like a dream than reality. You wonder if Craig would believe your story and sent him a text. Hey, bro -am. I'm at the secret Papa John's! To drive the point home, you snap a selfie of yourself in the interior, with the goblin in uniform lurking in the background. He's totally gonna flip out, you think to yourself. Soon, your pizzas are complete, 
As the small green man behind the counter hands you the box, you check inside to see if the quirks of the rustic craftsmanship are still evident. You're pleased when you see that both pizzas appear to be entirely normal Papa John's pizzas. You thank the hardworking humanoids working in the restaurant and exit carefully, making sure not to drop the pizzas as you descend. With your pizzas in hand, you start to feel as if you're returning to your normal senses. You take a look over your shoulder at the pizzeria and realize that it is totally absent from the tree it was in moments ago. The pizzas are still warm in your hands, but the Papa John's where you purchase them has blinked out of existence. You quickly look at the picture on your phone to find that your selfie doesn't depict the interior of a Papa John's, but rather it is simply a photo of yourself sitting in the branches of a beech tree. Craig responded to the image with, Dude, lay off the grass, will you? You, like many others in Catskill, New York, were paying customers of the non-Euclidean Papa John's, which has been designated as CP3835. This extra-dimensional eatery has been deemed safe by the SCP Foundation, and many researchers agree that the pizza served there is quite good by Papa John's standards. The main anomalous property of SCP-3835 is that it can only be located under specific chemical circumstances. The key to seeing and entering into SCP-3835 is to be under the influence of THC, a psychoactive substance found in cannabis plants. An unaffected person cannot interact with the restaurant and will only perceive the location as an ordinary beech tree. In other words, you need to be this high to get inside. To make sure that the premises SCP-3835 is always observed, an entire mobile task force has been assigned to use THC while patrolling the area where the anomaly resides. Fittingly enough, this task force has been given the call sign Delta-20 and the code name Blazit. There are certainly far worse security details to be put on at the Foundation, especially since access to the pizza is another perk. While the usage of THC and its related products are required while on the job, the protocols regarding when mobile task force agents can enter SCP-3835 are slightly stricter. When it comes to non-Euclidean spaces, that is, spaces with larger interiors than the exteriors would imply, the conditions that allow entry and exit, as well as the duration of existence within the space, must be carefully and continuously measured. A miscalculation could result in a permanent departure from all known dimensions, even on the potentially safest sites. Couple the risks with the lapses in judgment caused by having heavy amounts of THC in the blood, and the importance of rigorous testing becomes obvious. The results of an experiment performed by a Foundation researcher by the name of Dr. Garfield shows that SCP-3835's extra-dimensional space, while generally not fatal, does risk harm to the unlikely occupant whose THC level dips below the required level. During the test, Dr. Garfield himself spent several hours inside the restaurant until the high he felt during entry faded away. Slowly but surely, the interior of the Papa John's vanished as well leaving Dr. Garfield tumbling haplessly out of the branches. There was little ambiguity in the findings. It was clear that even when an individual has met the threshold to have entered the Papa John's, that individual will still lose contact with SCP-3835 the very moment that the THC is not sufficiently active in their system. While this is true of the location itself, any pizzas purchased within do not disappear when taken outside of the restaurant. When compared side by side to the equivalent menu items from a standard Papa John's, the composition of the pizza is indistinguishable. Lab tests have even shown that the ingredients are chemically the same. The foundations of a pizza, cheese, bread, tomato sauce, are all accounted for, as is any topping or additional ingredient that can be found on the Papa John's menu. This is despite the on-site observations that the pizzas are not constructed on these ingredients to start with. Tree material, as well as unknown ichors provided by the non-human staff form the raw materials of each food item initially and are changed into equivalent Papa John's items through an unseen process. While researchers have inquired into the nature of this transmutation, the proven fact that the pizzas are safe outweighs any concerns beyond academic curiosity. At the moment, the mysteries of how these arcane ingredients function are known only to the short green humanoid entities that serve as the staff of SCP-3835. These self-proclaimed goblins have been designated as SCP-3835-1, 
and share the safe object class with the non-Euclidean restaurant itself. Although SCP-3835-1 instances are primarily invested in delivering the highest quality of service to all customers within the restaurant, there have been occasions where SCP-3835-1 instances have divulged information about their history with the restaurant. According to an interview with one particular SCP-3835-1 instance, Horath Ramos of House Valkyne, this location has been a safe haven for many members of the goblinoid ancestry for several generations of human civilizational development. For as long as SCP-3835-1 have inhabited SCP-3835, the entities have bartered with the human population in exchange for goods. SCP-3835 being styled after a Papa John's pizzeria is only the latest in a series of marketplaces that have contributed to human anomaly relations. It is currently unknown whether or not the official Papa John's brand has endorsed SCP-3835 or is even aware of the branch location, but more is being done to look into it. What is known is that the pizza produced on site can not only be purchased with non-anomalous currency, but also traded for if the customer has something that an SCP-3835-1 instance wants. The bartering system of ancient civilizations seems to be honored to the same extent as fiat currency, as long as the deal that is struck is fair in the eyes of all present SCP-3835-1 instances. Fortunately, while the SCP-3835-1 can be surly and a bit blunt in their communication, the entities are generally friendly with human beings and will accept haggled prices if it means having another satisfied customer. As far as we know, the SCP-3835-1 instances wish to maintain a diplomatic relationship with the human race and presently view pizza as the commodity that guarantees such good terms. They are reluctant to reveal whether or not the anomalous properties of SCP-3835 relating to THC are due to a direct use of supernatural abilities by the instances. It is possible that humans under the influence of THC are thought to be more docile and suggestible, and this makes them less prone to question the presence of the SCP-3835-1 instances at all. It has certainly allowed the SCP-3835-1 and their restaurant to avoid discovery until very recently when a junior researcher by the name of Umar Hadid found the location during a leave of absence from the Foundation. Researcher Hadid was chosen as the recipient of the Greenhead Explorer Award due to his ventures into the extra-century plane unlocked through the use of THC. While the discovery of SCP-3835 might imply that other similar locations might be concealed behind the veil of perception, to go searching for them would require an unusually high amount of trial and error. What's more, the SCP-3835-1 are continually vague about whether or not there are more of their kind running restaurants for human benefit. Since SCP-3835 was discovered, various plant-friendly members of the Foundation have become regular customers at this particular Papa John's. The SCP-3835-1 instances, for their part, are more than happy to accept Foundation money and have expressed appreciation for the protection that the Mobile Task Force provides. On occasion, this means the SCP-3835-1 instances have entertained the MTF with their minor reality warping abilities and shared some of their unique anomalous trinkets, such as animate wood carvings. Unlike the pizzas purchased within, these items do not transfer back into reality when the effects of the THC wear off indicating that the objects created by SCP-3835-1 occupy the same layer of reality as SCP-3835 itself. The reason for this is not fully known, but it is believed to be related to the fact that the pizzas must be transmuted before they can become non-anomalous. The ingredients that are used to make the pizza are likely to become beyond the reality warping capacity of the SCP-3835-1 instances when they are post-transmutation. Prior to that point, it is assumed that the SCP-3835-1 instances can manipulate the elements of the tree and nature into pizza in the same way as all other trinkets. This means that instances of SCP-3835-1 might be able to transmute other items into lasting equivalents, but have limited their scope to pizza in order to better manage their presence. More research is being done into the past services that SCP-3835-1 living within SCP-3835 might have provided to the earlier eras of humanity, and if any transmuted artifacts are still intact on the less green side of reality. 
There is evidence that SCP-3835-1 has ancient enemies that need to be avoided at all cost, and alerting these other anomalies to their presence is something to be avoided altogether. These enemies include SCP-1000, otherwise known as the Bigfoot Apes, who have notably never shown much interest or desire for pizza, making the dish a suitably distant commodity to specialize in. There also appears to be a slightly contentious but not openly hostile relationship between the SCP-3835-1 and the native denizens of SCP-4000, but due to the risks involved with a much more dangerous anomaly, the assigned agents of SCP-3835 have been asked to pry no further into questioning instances about the Keter-class SCP. But an important question remains. Why pizza in particular? Well, one skilled chef among the SCP-3835-1, whose self-styled name is Rogan Sethton, son of Snoop, has stated that pizza is something of a universally appreciated food item. It's the same in every land since you humans invented it. Rogan says, Pizza is something that brings people together. Well, pizza and a little bit of the green stuff. Not money, but yeah, it can help us make that too. Recently, a few members of Mobile Task Force Delta 20 asked Rogan to provide a list of ingredients that his fellow SCP-3835-1 instances used to create the initial form of the pizza. Most especially, the Foundation staff was curious about the unrecognizable substance that always seems to be added after as a coating to the pizza. Rogan simply shook his head and laughed. Well, it wouldn't be much of a secret ingredient if I gave it away. Now check out SCP-5031, yet another murder monster, Top Food SCP, and SCP-348, a gift from Dad, food-friendly SCP, for more.